when you make a documentary so close after the 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 events that you're depicting, it seems like there's a there's a tension between making something as a time capsule for future generations and then making an immediate call to action and saying like this is what's happening right now, this is what we need to do. Did you find a tension between those two or, or, or find yourself leaning one way or the other? I think I was trying to capture as it was unfolding mm. and in the same time I was trying to tell the fascinating story of the human beings who came out. For example, you have this fascinating 12 year old character, Romka, who is uh, from the first day been there and we can observe his maturity through these 93 days. So it's a fascinating character and uh, for him, it was his story of his life. It was his school of life during these 93 days. And you had these characters on right and left. So for me, it was important to kind of capture their stories and bring these stories outside of Ukraine. So I think I not was trying to do a call for action. I was trying just to document as it was and document these interesting and fascinating stories that can be related to a lot of people across the globe. Were there other people that you noticed change significantly over that time period? That, that whether it's somebody in the film or, or or somebody who didn't make it into the final cut. You know what? I think starting with Romka, who changed from the first day when he arrived to Maidan. When I met him, he was a pure child. And then at the end of the movement, at the end when the Maidan achieved, when the movement achieved its goals in the, in February 2014. I think you can see this drastical change. And I think for everybody who's been there, who went through all these 93 days of the movement, I think all these people found fascinating what is patriotism, what is real unity. And I think this movie is about unity. The message that comes from this big screen, it's a unity of all generations, unity of all faces. You can see this amount of different uh, religion uh, organizations together in one place, standing together with the people. I haven't seen how, uh, I haven't seen actually through the entire world's history that something like this happens when you can see church together with the people. Church usually kind of on the side of the government helping to control people. Here you had all the faces together with the people. And at the same time you saw all the nationalities together. For example, first person who died was Armenian guy who not born in Ukraine, but he gave his life for the Ukrainian future. Second after him was Belarusian guy, Zhiznevsky. So it's amazing to see all these nationalities together being there. And again, all social classes. I, for example, I, I can tell you a story how some rich ladies were coming, parking their rich and expensive cars, couple of blocks from the square, and going and cutting sandwiches for the people on the square. So it's amazing to see all these unities together. It doesn't seem like there was a hierarchy. It didn't seem like there was a, a, a governing body and then everybody else. It seemed like everybody was kind of on the same playing field. If that I, think, I think it was self-organization, how they managed. And each person was finding what to do and finding his organic place in all these movements. So it was literally self-organization. That's why when I arrived on the first place, it was different. It was people who came out. It's people who decided to voice themselves. And it was amazing.